this episode of Your Stories Don't Define You, How You Tell Them Will, I am on a call with Fatima Williams, and we've been connected on LinkedIn for years. I'm so eager to get started in this conversation because we started talking before I even hit record, and I knew already that this was going to be a great episode. Fatima, thank you so much for joining me today. It's such a joy, Sarah. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, I've been your admirer for quite a while now, and it's actually uh, a very happy moment for me to be here with you, talking to you. So thank you for inviting me. Oh, absolutely. It's an honor. Can you tell me first where you're located? Where are you calling from? Well, I uh, I'm usually located in Dubai. I live in the UAE, but I was born and raised in India. What part of India? Um, particularly uh, in the southern part, uh, it's called Chennai, if you've heard of it. Yes, I have. Um, Hemamalini uh, Vekram. I- I'm, I'm not pronouncing her last name correctly, but I've been connected with her for nearly 10 years and she's a journalist there. So I, I do know where that is. I looked it up on a map the, when okay. I was interacting with her many years ago. <laughs> That's fantastic. You should visit Chennai. If you ever visit, please, you know who to contact. Absolutely. I definitely will. And I'll tag Hemamalini on this when we um, publish this podcast, because she'll be glad to hear I'm chatting with somebody from there. She gave me a little tour. We were video chatting and she gave me a little tour of where she lives. It was amazing. So yes, it's definitely on my list. So um, if it, Fatima, I always begin my uh, podcast episode by asking the um, guest to share something about themselves that most people might not know about them. And I have to tell you, just in the beginning of our call, before I hit record, you were sharing some things that I didn't know about you, um, that that hesitation and the the self-consciousness early on. I was a little surprised by that because that's never how I perceived you. But I'm going to go ahead and leave it up to you. What um, would you like to share with our listeners that most people might not know about you? Well, Sarah, I've been torn with this question, actually, ever since you put it up on the email. And I've been thinking about it. And ever since uh, I sent you the email for, you know, being a part of this conversation, so much has happened uh, in my life since then in this in these last few weeks. And uh, looking back, uh, I feel that, uh, you know, again, going back to our conversation before we we hit record, right? Mm-hmm. I, I, I feel that I was actually a person who was more self-conscious and introverted, who was kind of forced to become an extrovert and who had to grow up very fast. If I, if I look back, going back when I was younger, uh, as, uh, you know, as early as maybe 12 years, I think so. Up until that time, um, nobody knew knew my name. Uh, I was a a very quiet person who would probably get caught for uh, having ink all over her fingers or probably not doing my homework or, uh, you know, just fidgeting in class, you know. So those were the reasons that I would be identified for, but not for being the noisy one or being uh, chatty uh, in class or anything like that. So looking back, I I, I realized that I was kind of forced to grow up very fast uh, because of a, a incident that happened in my life. And yeah, that's that's something I think our readers do not, uh, our listeners do not know about me. Mm. It's it's interesting because you took this in a slightly different direction than I was anticipating, because I, I have had quite a few people say that um, it might surprise people to learn that they consider themselves an introvert. But what I'm hearing you say is that you did consider yourself an introvert and you were kind of forced to become more extroverted. And now you've embraced that in a sense, yes. in a way that most people would just say that they're you know, faking it or just doing it because it's a necessity. But it it sounds like you've embraced that that external um, energy and love for people. Yes, and it worked to my advantage. It helped me battle through many of the challenges that I had in life. So I thought to myself, you know, why not? 
<laughs> well, and that leads right into the discussion we were having before I hit record that I was eager to catch up to. Um, I've been focusing this podcast in the last few episodes on surrounding yourself with the people that are doing what you want to be doing, the people who support and encourage you, knowing that as kids, we're told not to end up with the wrong crowd. But then as adults, we seem to be so um, oblivious to the fact that the people that we are spending time with can either be our greatest asset or our biggest liability. And what you were saying before I hit record was that you were watching others of us on LinkedIn, making our way, sharing vulnerability, um, watching our journeys, and that it gave you some confidence. So could you share a little bit more about that? Absolutely. I mean, LinkedIn has been one of the biggest platforms. And I would also add uh, BB, which I'm sure uh, you know about. We, we mm -hmm. both have been a part of that platform. These two platforms were kind of instrumental in my journey to who I am today. I could actually even give the credit to them, you know, because I have met so many amazing people. And what I learned from each and every person, their journey, uh, it could be a message that they've shared on LinkedIn, or it could be an article or a comment to somebody else's post. And every time someone shared something, uh, you know, which was quite sensitive or a little vulnerable, I would think to myself, wow, this this happened to me as well, you know. And uh, wow, look at her, how, how she's handled it. Why am I not able to do that? And, you know, I would look at another person and say, well, I know everything that she knows and she's doing amazingly well with everything she's, you know, uh, doing on with her work. Why am I not uh, able to uh, embrace that? And, you know, what is holding me back? So a lot of questions and also learning from the way you guys have been growing. Like you, Sarah, I've been watching your journey as well. And it's a beautiful journey of yours. It's very inspiring I, I remember, uh, you know, you talking about your music and then you started and uh, no longer virtual. And I used to think to myself, wow, if only I could go there. And, you know, at that time, I couldn't even afford to think about it. But, you know, thank God, uh, you know, for that today, I if I want to be there, which I'm sure you're sold out now, so I can't. Uh, I Not would yet. Not, Not yet. yet. You are definitely <laughs> invited. We would love to see you okay, in Chicago. That's, that's good news. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm gonna see how I can make that happen. But you know, I'm saying a few years ago when you started NLV, it was never even a thought that would come to my mind. I'm like, I can't even go there. You know, what am I gonna be doing among all these amazing people? When you know, it took me a lot of time to actually embrace uh my own strengths and what I actually do for other people. And I've, I, as I told you, you know, I was, I, I, I was forced to grow up very fast. Uh, uh, my dad had a stroke when I was in high school. And um, ever since then, you know, I had to take on responsibilities. And here's something people wouldn't know about me. I acted a little bit in the movies. <laughs> I, I went uh. to the cinema. Yeah. Because, you know, I wanted to make some extra bucks. So I kind of go in for these uh, background roles where you kind of get some pocket money as well for myself because I was in school. And, um, yeah, I mean, um, those were things that uh, actually helped me to embrace this person I am, you know, become, uh, interact with people and, you know, be bold and like kind of, put on a face for everything because I had to, I had to be that person. Otherwise I, I would, I would be taken advantage of, or I would be bullied. So I had to like literally stand up for myself from a very young age. Mm -hmm. Wow. So just so our, our listeners can hear, can you tell us in a story um, about something that recently happened in your work that really describes your work through a story form? Sure. Um, so 
I am currently a career growth strategist and I used to work in the recruitment industry for a very long time. And when I uh, resigned my job during the pandemic, um, I was on this path of embracing who I was, you know, because I had uh, a very close family member of mine uh, pass away. And this was actually my third close interaction with death after my father had passed away in 2014. So it was literally a, a place where I could no longer take it anymore. I was like, no, I, I can't hold the person I am. I have so much of love. I have so much of knowledge to share. Uh, I, you know, and I love seeing people smile. I love bringing out that energy in people. So I said, I should be doing this for the rest of my life, you know. And um, recently, I started participating uh, in a competition that also helps me to uh, showcase my work. So, yeah, I mean, this is this is what's been happening in uh, with work and with what I'm doing. So I, I help career professionals to embrace who they are and really bring out uh, their best self. In fact, it kind of aligns with uh, what you do as well. Um, I believe you help people understand uh, themselves despite their differences, right? Uh, you know, that's like something you do. And yes. um, I remember reading in one of, uh, or I actually, when I was like brushing up for our conversation, I remember reading that your aha moment was when you understood that what you do is because of them. It's it's not, uh, you know, anything else. You want to do it because of them, right? And uh, I think that kind of aligns with what I do as well for my work with coaching and and training. Right. That your differences are what make you stand out. It's um, it's not despite or in spite of those differences. It's because of those differences that you have something yes. to offer. Yes. yes. Oh, I love that. I love that. So tell me about a recent client that you had success with. So the, there was this client that I was working with and um, she was in her late fifties and, um, you know, it, it took me quite a long time to make her understand that age was just a number because despite what we all say you know people always bring up age as a factor when it comes to hiring right mm -hmm. and we see so many posts on LinkedIn or on other platforms where they say that you know they want a, a particular age group within which they want to hire so um, I think one of the biggest transformations, so I use intentionality, uh, which is, you know, to uh, use goals, characters and behaviors, all three come together to help that person have this intentional transformation. So we started off with goals, but the goals were not the main thing. It was the behaviors and the habits that, you know, I had to work with. And her mindset as well. So I heard like, who is she? She's like, I'm a person, I have to wake up. So I started off, you know, with her day and how she takes care of her family. And she was just this woman with the bundle of energy. And I said, wow, I'm not even married. And I doubt I can do so many things that you're <laughs> doing right now. You have so much of energy. She goes for morning walks. Sometimes she goes for a run. And I'm like, well, I do not do such things. And you're telling me that, you know, you think age is such a number. Uh, age is a problem for you to get hired. Yeah, these are, this is what the HR professionals are telling me. And, and I asked her, what do you think uh, about yourself? Tell me, what do you think you can offer for the world or to your work, especially? And she said, you know, X, Y, Z. And I'm like, this is it. You know, this is what you're going to embrace. And this is what you're going to hold on to every time you walk into, uh, you know, a conversation. So she said, she told me that she feels uh, younger. And I said, you don't have to feel younger. You know, in your mind that you're younger, you know, and you have this knowledge to share and you're still healthy and you can go for runs in the morning. So that is how I want you to behave as well. because." 
it's not enough for you to just think about it. You have to behave and show that to other other people, you know, so that they can also uh, believe and embrace what you think in your head. So just thinking about it inside your head is not going to help you get the results you want. And um, and yeah, of course, you know, her CV and all of the other things which we worked on. And she called me uh, and I was almost done with, you know, coaching her. I was going for a holiday uh, to Oman uh, and I get this call at like 9.30 in the night. Uh, I'm already in a hurry and I'm like, who's calling me? Somebody's screaming at the other end of the phone and she's like, I'm so sorry I called you so late, but you know, I was so busy with my new work. Today was the onboarding day and I was I was I was held up. I was so shocked that they called me to come in to join today that I couldn't share this news with you in the morning. And I just reached home and I want to tell you thank you so much uh, for you know believing in me when I didn't believe in myself. And I said uh, well, I, you know, it is you who believed in yourself. I just made you aware of that. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's just that you forgot, you'd forgotten about it. Or from the time you, she said six months uh, to two, uh, from six months, she'd been uh, working on her CV. But prior to that two years, she'd been unemployed uh, oh, since wow. the pandemic had started. Yeah. So it was in April 2022. Uh, that this client had this transformational success to share with me and I was on top of the world I was like wow (laughs) oh that's the best kind of story I love that I love that it's there's something just so rewarding about holding up the mirror for somebody to see all their beauty and also to see where they're getting in their own way absolutely and you know it it kind of resonates with what I wanted to do as well right because for a long time I was in the shadows I was the person in the stand I was the cheer uh, I was the che- person cheering for the the, the crowd yeah. and it took me a long time to, to realize that I can be the cheerleader too mm-hmm. I can come into the stand and I can also participate so um, yeah and I every time somebody tells me that and I'm like I was this person right so I have to bring them out and make them shine in all their glory because uh, this is this is the quote uh, that I love saying and I'm not sure if you've read read it. I've I've posted it quite a lot of times. I it's not enough just for us to learn, grow, and shine. But you know when we learn and when we grow, we should shed a light, enabling shed a light on the path that we've been on, so that we can enable others to see, you know, to learn and to grow just like us. Mm, the word illuminate just popped into my head. And I'm, I I do a lot of hiking and even in the evening or nighttime sometimes. And I was just thinking about turning around with my light to illuminate the path for the next person. Absolutely. That's lovely. I mean, yeah, I that is something really, really phenomenal to do, right? Mm-hmm. I love that. It's funny. Um, I I had a coaching client a little while ago who was a public speaker. She's a business owner, but she had, and she's a great public speaker already, but she was invited to do a TED style talk at a big event with, that was um, really important to her and her business and her career. And she hired me to go through a few sessions to craft her talk and mm-hmm. to practice it. And I remember this moment when I got a text message from her saying that she had nailed it and that people had come up to her afterward and told her things. Um, you had me in tears. Um, I was telling my wife's story all wrong. The really important things that people learned and were inspired by in her talk. And I had this moment of realizing that I was part of the foundation of that impact. And it wasn't, it wasn't me on the stage, but it may as well have been. And it was just such an honor to think yeah. about that role. Right. I mean, it's, it's the feeling that you get, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like, you're no longer in the audience seat, but you're actually, and it's such a beautiful feeling. And I, I wish everybody had looked at, uh, you know, coaching or mentoring 
uh, in the same way uh, because if they did then embracing that feeling of happiness along with the other person it, it's something sensational to be honest it is it's hard sometimes i remember when i first started um coaching people in public speaking which is one of one of the many services that i've been doing over the years and she had such great success that when she came back to me and she told me all of these things that were happening i had i have to admit this i had like 2 seconds of uh envy 2 okay. seconds of that should have been me <laughs> and then uh, the next you know after that it it only it literally only took me 2 or 3 seconds of that edge of envy to go away to disperse to realize the value of the position that I had, the role I had in her success. But I think that may be what stops people is that that envy lasts too long or they're concerned yeah. that they'll feel that. And so they don't start in the first place of, of guiding the next person or illuminating the path for fear that that person will overtake them on, on that path. And um, I think people forget that there's room for all of us. Yes. And, and that's the thing, right? That's what I've been actually advocating as well. It's one of the things I advocate with among the many values that I hold that, you know, there's room for all of us. Yeah, you know, I don't know how many billion people are there on this planet, but there's so much more that we can do. And there's so many people that are need that need our services. So even if each uh, like even if there's one out of ten coaches or one out of trainer, one out of ten trainers, there's still room uh, for, for people. Because if you see generation that is coming up, there are a lot of people who need guidance, and there's no 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 room for envy. There shouldn't be any room for envy in the first place. So what held me back was that fear of being this person, right? Whether could I be this person? Like, will I get envy as well from people, you know, because I've not been this person. I've not been this brave person. Uh, yes, I've been brave in my work, in my coaching, in, my, uh, in you know, what I do officially. But personally, as a person, right, I've not been uh, able to own up to my talents. Like, even if I was in a room full of singers, and if I thought to myself that I could sing, I wouldn't say that I, I will sing, you know, I would keep right. quiet. But today, if you put me in a room full of singers and ask me to sing, I would sing even if I I I, I don't mind if anyone thinks my voice doesn't sound good. You know, I I am in that particular mind space and to embrace who we are, you know, what we can do. That is something which is very, very instrumental to eliminating other people's path and our path in the process. Absolutely. As I've said in the past, um, to teach is to learn more deeply. Yes, that's 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 lovely. Yes, I'm reminded of the uh, the fish quote now. No, oh, if a fish could be very uh, smart, but it'll look stupid if you day. ask it to climb a tree. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, <laughs> or something like that. <laughs> right, but there is, you know, yeah. I mean. So coming back to what you were saying, right, it, it is uh, something very, very beautiful. And if everyone could embrace that there is no room for envy, but just love, I think the world would be such a better place. Oh, my gosh, you are not kidding. And to stop comparing, you know, yes. I, I think one of the, the things that stood out to me when you were talking at the very beginning about um, surrounding yourself with these people on LinkedIn and seeing what they were doing and thinking, why, why can't I do that? What is holding me back? It wasn't, um, I, I want what she has. It was, I want my own version of what she has. And that kind of stood out to me in how you talked about your journey. Yes, I, I've always been this bigger sister, uh, you know, this friend that you could lean on and, uh, this listener and uh, you know these are some of the words that I've earned over the years right and um, entrepreneur is a word that I started uh, loving in 
2017, six, it could be 16, 17, I'm not quite sure, but I started writing uh, the Woman Entrepreneur articles in 2018 when uh, I read something about how women uh, were not being given, given funding, enough of funding uh, to start businesses. And it kind of, you know, like why why are women not getting funding? Let me let me find out. <laughs> and you know, I'm like this person who's curious as well. I love I love to find out why some things are not the way it's supposed to be. So I went and wrote this research, and then I was like, okay, now I need to talk to people and see. So entrepreneur is a word I loved, and and the reason why I love that word is because I wanted to be one as well, but I didn't realize that in this journey of trying to understand what entrepreneurship is, what challenges are, that I would end up becoming one. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it, 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 I think it's deep down that true desire that you have in your heart for, you know, who you want to be or what you want to do or for other people. It, it, mm. if, it, it will come out. There's no, there's no stopping you if you are an amazing person with big heart and like you said you know uh, drop the envy don't compare yourself with other people uh, and if you're just on that trajectory of learning doing and eliminating I think we'll all be just fine Sarah. <laughs> well that that brings me back to um, an old podcast episode that I did on labels and how you can choose the labels that you want associated with you and your life and um, mine was kind of tongue in cheek. It was funny. It was outdoorsy. And I had never considered myself that way. And the irony is that just a couple of days ago, I went to see a stylist for my hair that I had never met before. And she said, are you outdoorsy? Do you like to be outdoors a lot? And I started laughing. I said, why would you say that? She said, you just look like the kind of woman that would be outdoorsy. And I thought, oh, all right. I made that happen. <laughs> But I, I was thinking about the, the label entrepreneur. Do you want that label? Is that something that is meaningful to you? And do you understand what the consequences are of having that label? Because it's not all fun and games. Just like being outdoorsy isn't always the best thing. I mean, there are definitely some downsides when you're stuck in a meeting all day. But when you choose that label, <clears throat> back to the the themes that I've been focusing on with my guests and in my monologues on my podcast in the last few months, when you choose that label, surround yourself with other people that already have that label and, and people who will support you. And, and, and back to this whole thing about NLV and how you wanted to come in those first few years, but you weren't sure that you would fit there, that you could contribute, that you belonged there. And, I am often surprised at how many people tell me that after they've attended, that they wondered um, if they should be there because they were comparing themselves to other people who were going to show up. And every time they say, and here I was in the room sitting next to somebody that I've admired for years been watching their journey. And she's just another human with very similar questions and uh, insecurities that I'm dealing with right now. So I I just love this idea of choosing a label and then working your way into it and making sure you're surrounding yourself with people who you admire and respect and that they will support and encourage you. Absolutely. And that is what I love about uh, your stories don't define you. You know, when you started uh, this podcast, I was, I, I, I will always, you know, somehow find some time and tune in uh, to one of those episodes because um, that is very powerful message uh, that you're sharing, Sarah. Your stories don't define you, right? For a long time, each of us, many of us, are held back by the stories we've been told, by the labels that that we've been given, uh, you know, and. That is that very, very instrumental uh, for our career as well. You know, the career path we choose, the decisions we, we make in our career, the way we interact with people at work, 
it, it is very powerful. And for us to be able to identify the labels that we want for ourselves is very important. You know, who is it that I want to be known for? You know, what is it that I want to embrace? What are my values? What I want to share with other people? And uh, your stories don't define you that exactly that. And and it's it's such a beautiful thing that you're doing it. So I want to thank you on behalf of all the listeners out there for doing this. Oh, thanks, Fatima. I appreciate hearing that. So if you were going to tell one more story about your experience, something that was pivotal in your life, um, what would that be? This is, uh, you know, about my principle uh, I would like to share. And, uh, you know, I think I told you when I was 12 years old, I did something terribly wrong in the beginning. And I think it will be unfair to our audience not to share with them uh, what was it that I did. So. I actually copied in school, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so I hated this geography exam that I had to study for. And, and um, I was thinking to myself, how am I going to study all these things? And why am I studying this? Because I really didn't like geography at the time. And um, there was this neighbor who, you know, kind of he was walking by and he said, I my exam, you could try the same thing. And I and he was definitely joking. He didn't want me to take his advice. But I, like a very studious child, took up his advice and attempted uh, you know, to copy in class. And I did. And I got caught for it. And that is a moment when everybody in school came to know who Fatima is. So oh, no. until then nobody knew who Fatima was. <laughs> Yeah. So the reason why I'm sharing this is I'll tell you the story behind this. Okay. So yeah, I did something uh, silly and, and, you know, uh, something that was not right. And uh, when I went into the principal's office, I was expecting to be shouted at and, you know, scolded like because the teachers were screaming at me for sure. And, uh, but when I've gone, when I went into the principal's office, I, I, I can tell you her name, Sister Rose Daphne is her name. And she, brought me she made me sit down she gave me a glass of water and she asked me what is going on Fatima is everything okay at home and things were difficult at home at that time uh, you know but intention for her was to try to understand why I did that right so I told her that you know I really couldn't understand the subject and my neighbor gave me this idea and I just you know thought let me just attempt doing what he said and she said that, uh, you know, I really appreciate you sharing this with me because uh, for you to own up to what you've done is, number one, you know, the first step for you to identifying what you've done is wrong. So that is already taken care of. And the second thing she told me was, is, you know, no matter what people tell us, we have to be able to understand what is the right path to take, right? So she asked me that any time, so she felt that the teachers and the principal were not open enough, that the students could not come up to them and share that, you know, if the subject was difficult or, you know, um, that they couldn't learn, that we couldn't share it. So she said, this has given me an experience to communicate with the teachers that if a student finds it difficult, we should be more open to them so we should have an open door policy so she said my office is going to be open for you anytime in case if you find any subject difficult for you to study or something you don't understand you can come here sit down with me and I will explain it to you so what was the learning here is so even though I did something wrong I was not pointed at you know my fingers were not pointed out for what I did wrong in fact she tried to identify what I did this mistake right so I think this is something that each one of us have to do even if things go wrong in our life we need to try to understand why are they going wrong what is it that we are doing what are these actions or behaviors or like you said the labels that we give ourselves that is putting us into this situation and um, if we're able to do that from, and I'll tell you something, Sarah, from that day onwards, I've never failed in a single subject. I've been, when I passed out of school, I was the second school topper 
in mathematics. Wow. And, you know, it's been a journey I've never even thought about. Because if she had to kind of reprimand me in a way, you know, that you fault someone, right? Maybe mm -hmm. the impact would have been different on a 12-year-old. Oh, but it definitely would have been. Yes. It, it definitely would have been. I keep thinking about the normal reaction. I, and I say normal with quotes around it. Yeah. The normal reaction is to be penalized, to be punished for cheating. And that principle, I got a chill as you were telling me that story. The principal understood that if she labeled you a cheater, then that is what people would know you for. Yeah. They, yes. we, they would freeze you in time for one mistake you made at 12 years old. Yes. Yes. She is such a beautiful person. I keep thinking that, you know, I need to meet her today because uh, in the last few weeks, I've been thinking about meeting her because a lot of who I am today has been instrumental uh, in her support for me. Right. I think we all have that one person who has inspired us. And after I interacted with her and after she that was my first close interaction with the principal, by the way. And after that, we've been close friends ever since, uh, she, up, uh, until she left uh, the school. And uh, I decided that day that I want to be like her. Wow. I want to inspire people in spite of their mistakes. I want to help them be their best versions in spite of the challenges that are thrown that way. And yes, it took me a very long time, but I'm happy to say I, I am there now. And continuing to grow into that role. Absolutely. I am learning every single day. The learning never stops, for right. sure. Oh, I love that story so much. I wish everyone had an opportunity to have somebody like that in their lives. And it comes back to who do you want in your life? Who, who will you surround yourself with? And can you be that person for the next person? And wow, I, I love that story so much. I'm so glad you shared that. Yes, that's something that has never even been posted on social media or anywhere. In fact, I was saving it for my book. But yes, I, I wanted to share this because I know that it will people will identify with it. And that is your your podcast is all about that, right? Identifying with stories. And I and I want to do that for you as well. <laughs> well, that's a perfect, I mean, that is a pivotal moment. And I think many people would have forgotten about it or wouldn't have been able to look back and pinpoint that moment. I mean, I, I don't believe in, in watershed moments. I don't believe in a, a light suddenly going bright. I, I know that all of our learning is on a dimmer switch. There are moments, though, that we can identify where that light got much brighter and where we were able to turn on uh, that dimmer switch for the next person. So I, I love that our whole conversation has been <laughs> in, including light and illumination. That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think that's because we both identify with it, right? Uh, you know, the, the power of intention is so strong. And um, I, and when I came to this podcast, I set the intention uh, for myself that, you know, the message should be about lighting up other people's lives. And I think I kind of achieved that. So I'm happy about that. Definitely. Absolutely. I keep coming back in my head to imagining you in the office with um with the principal and her and your discomfort knowing that you were in trouble and her response bringing you a glass of water that alone putting you in that position of of she was serving you so that yes. you would understand the the idea behind this conversation wasn't a penalty it wasn't pointing a finger and and giving you a hard time or labeling you and um I just, I was there in the room with you. It was a beautiful story. Thank you so much for sharing it. Thank you, Sarah, for letting me share that story as well. Well, I'm looking forward to reading it in your book. Absolutely. <laughs> I can't <laughs> wait to share it with everybody. And uh, yeah, it's it's been such a beautiful conversation uh, with you. And uh, please keep inspiring, keep shining the light for us so that 
wherever, whatever trips you're on. I, I keep following up of, of, on your trips, you know, your hikes that you share. Uh, it's like I'm there with you on that journey and it's, it's beautiful. Thank you, Fatima. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you so much. Could you tell me that you're going away?